Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the customer success lead at Xano, and in this video, I'm excited to introduce to you guys uh, response caching powered by Redis. So what is response caching? It's a way that Xano can store the uh, data of a response of an API endpoint or function uh, in memory for very quick and performant uh, data retrieval. So um, for example here, you'll see my API endpoint right now says response caching enabled. So a couple things. First is um, on our dedicated resources plans, we have a library of data caching functions. Uh, so you can get maybe as uh, granular and specific as certain applications may need. Um, but I'll go into that in another video. In this video, I want to talk to you about response caching. So how we can enable response caching on an API endpoint uh, is we can click right here or even open the settings of a query. And if we scroll down, we can actually enable caching. So this is what it looks like disabled. And here is what it looks like enabled. Uh, so as you can see, uh, response caching, significant performance improvements can be made using response caching. So once we enable it, there are a few different settings um, that we can look at. First is TTL, which is just time to live, and that's just how long your cache lives. As you can see, you can cache for five seconds up to seven days. So a lot of granularity there, uh, just depending on maybe your data is not changing at all. So seven days might be better. Maybe it is changing frequently, so you want to get something uh, with a lower time frame. Um, additionally, that use inputs for caching. You can turn this off or on. Uh, there's different use cases where you might want to uh, include the inputs and other uh, use cases where you do not want to include the inputs for the caching signature. Additionally, if this endpoint requires authentication, which mine does right now, um, you can choose to use the authenticated ID for caching signature. This can be very useful if you want to cache results on a per user basis. You'll notice if I disable authentication right now, that option goes away. Um, additionally, we can um, use an IP address for the caching signature if you want to cache uh, your response based on an IP address. There's also these optional settings here. You can choose to uh, add the HTTP request header names um, to response caching if you know the names and you want to cache those. Additionally, environment variables. You can very easily uh, do that as well. So response caching is done on any live API call. So uh, currently, um, we don't do response caching here in run and debug. We might add this later. But for now, you can open up your documentation, jump to Swagger, and you can see response caching uh, working in action. So this endpoint was my get user. So for example here, if I try it out and hit execute, uh, we can go down here into the response headers and see there's this x query cache. So it says zero. So the first time you hit this, um, the API endpoint is going to run as is. And then after that, uh, you will see a uh, cache result of one. So if I go ahead and execute this again, now we can see the query cache is at one. So that value there of one just means the data is cached. So let's jump back to Xano and let's talk about some um, different use cases here of why you might use some different settings. So I'm going to turn this user authentication on. So let's talk about why you might have um, use inputs, but not use um, the authenticated ID for caching signature. So imagine this is still an authenticated endpoint. Um, user authentication is on. Here, let me go ahead and save this so it says that there for so it doesn't confuse anyone. So this endpoint requires authentication, but you are using your inputs for caching signature, but not the authenticated ID for caching. Um, so this could be maybe you have some kind of company wide statistics or dashboard. So um, any inputs, which might be some kind of search parameters or values inputted to see some kind of statistics, those will get cached in the response. But we won't do it on a um, authenticated ID because you don't want to show these results on a per user basis. They're company wide, right? So you want to be able to show that to everyone. If, for example, we wanted to say uh, yes to use authenticated ID for caching signature, this example could be more so for 
uh, personal statistics. Maybe you have sales reps that need to go ahead and look at their own kind of um, statistics and whatnot. Um, in this case, we would turn on both inputs and the authenticated ID for caching results. So that any inputted values, um, each time they would get cached for quicker responses, and then also it would be on a per user basis. Um, what if we wanted to disable both of these? Uh, one use case could be if, let's say, we're having a movie night and we want to be able to generate a random movie uh, based on a category. Well, if we do this, then the very first category search will return a random movie. Let's say we search science fiction and or input that and Star Wars pops out. Well, now every other API hit um, is going to pop out Star Wars because it's not caching uh, the input nor the authenticated ID. Um, so in this case, our uh, response will be cached as always Star Wars. So that will be our random movie for the night. Um, so there's more examples to come, especially on the uh, specific Redis functions for the dedicated resource plans. Um, but I hope you found this helpful. Um, you'll also see this response caching enabled on your endpoint when you do that. Um, it's a very good way to improve performance of large queries, especially when uh, the data is not changing. So hope this was helpful and uh, see you guys in the next video.